Hey everyone, this is Paul with RC Foam Fighters. This is just going to be a quick video on uh, three different ways you can record the speed of your RC aircraft. First we're going to start off with the typical radar gun that we've been using. Then after that we're going to take a look at the uh, Eagle Tree airspeed module that I mounted recently on the Supernova Jet. And last we'll be looking at the WaveScope program that uses uh, the Doppler effect to record the speed of, of uh, objects by sound. So let's get into the video and see how they all look. Okay, up first is the uh, basic Bushnell radar gun that me and Frank have been using. Bushnell actually has a couple models um, that they make. This one's the uh, Speedster 2, I believe. And uh, they, they range from around $79 to $89 for the basic models. And it's actually a pretty good tool. It uh, measures the RC aircraft probably about starting at 100 feet away or maybe a little more. Um, basically, all you do to use these, you just turn them on. And when the RC aircraft is coming at you, there's a trigger. And you just squeeze and hold the trigger down for the whole pass. And it'll record the fastest speed um, during the time the trigger's um, held down. And then it'll, uh, once you let go of the trigger, it'll show the highest speed it recorded. Um, it's a really handy tool. Um, the only bad thing about this is you do have to fly pretty close to yourself to pick it up. And uh, that can be pretty dangerous when you start getting uh, these really fast airplanes going. So that's one method that we use. Um, it works pretty good. Um, and the best way to be accurate though, you really have to be straight on and perpendicular to the gun when it's coming at you. If you're coming in at an angle or recording it from the side, it's not going to be as, as accurate. Basically, I don't know if you can see this really good. I recently uh, purchased an airspeed module made by Eagle Tree. It's just a little tiny module that's uh, basically powered by your uh, BEC. Um, it has a little plug that basically just plugs into an uh, empty uh, servo plug and it just takes power from that. And it can run standalone or also this module can also plug into the uh, bigger Eagle Tree uh, logger module that they have that'll record a bunch of other stuff but it will run standalone um, it, it records the highest speed while in flight and the way this works this um, works off of a pitot tube like a real aircraft and this is going to measure airspeed this is not going to measure ground speed those two are different um, basically it works off the pressure differential from the air rushing into the front of the tube um, versus ambient conditions so by the pressure it can calculate how fast you are going um, based on airspeed. And it has little, two little tubes that run back from the pitot tube that goes all the way back into the airspeed module. Uh, please forgive me, this is a real uh, hokey setup right now that I have on here. I just threw it on at the last minute. I plan on embedding it into the aircraft where basically just the tube will hang out the nose and it needs to hang out at least an inch. Um, past whatever it's attached to. So I'll probably do a little more um, video on that in the future and show a little better installation of it. But this was just a quick um, tape on job I did of the Eagle Tree airspeed meter. Okay, up last will be the WaveScope program. It's uh, free and available on the internet um, through the forums or directly from the um, program's website. It's actually all in German, but they do have English instructions. I'll post links in the sidebar of where you can get it and also um, where it's um, reviewed on the forum. But basically this program works off sound waves and it uses the Doppler effect which is um, basically a pitch shift of a new moving object um, as it corresponds with sound. And by that pitch shift you can measure or calculate the speed of the object that was recorded by sound waves. So basically to use this program you really need something that's going to be kind of steady and stable. If you're using a camcorder you should not pan the camera with the airplane as it flies by. It should just be a steady straight shot and the flight of the aircraft should be straight over the uh, recording device, either the camcorder or voice recorder or whatever you have set up to be most accurate. So, And also one of the important things is you need to make sure that the point that it starts recording the sound, the pitch of the engine is uh, at a steady pace so don't vary the throttle as you're doing your sound source for the uh, wave program. So you want to have it kind of at a steady full throttle a little ways out past the camera and then get way past it before you bring the throttle back down. So it's a nice steady pitch because it needs to measure that same sound wave coming in the program. If you're varying the pitch and varying the sound of the motor it's going to affect the, uh, the sound file in an adverse way and give you um, irregular readings that are not accurate. So let me show you. Here's a, a kind of an example of a, a correct sound wave. See how basically here it just has a single kind of step in the sound wave. If you have multiple steps in the sound wave, 
it's not going to really work accurately. So um, make sure your sound waves are nice and clean to be most accurate. And in a little while here, um, after we get out to the field, I'll pull out the sound file and we'll compare it to the actual radar gun reading. And uh, you can see how accurate and close they are to each other. Off that 43. Oh, let me zoom in. Yeah, it's on there. Well, that's about the same as last time. Okay, I'm gonna try and fly directly over the uh, sound camera real quick once. Yeah, <laughs> Are you out of battery? You out of juice? <laughs> yeah, don't forget to do your cool down laps, man. <laughs> I forget that one all the time. A what? <laughs> yeah. I'll okay, get ready. off the other camera. Yeah, let's check that pedo tube reading. Yeah, hopefully the uh, wind isn't too strong on the sound camera. Oh, okay, 119. This might be pretty close okay, yeah. because it's airspeed. Uh, okay, uh, we got the uh, airspeed sensor here. It looks like it possibly picked up pretty good. The airspeed is saying 119. And again, remember, airspeed is um, only reading by the air pressure. So if you're going with the wind, it won't read that extra pressure um, that you're losing by the wind speed. So wind speed and ground speed are uh, different, but look, look looks like the air speed is about 119. Okay, guys, here's a real quick comparison of the radar gun versus the uh, wave scope program. As you can see, they're fairly close. Um, luckily, we had a good straight run towards the camcorder, and it recorded the sound file nice and clean. As you can see, there's only a single step in the in the sound wave, and not multiple steps. If it's got multiple steps, then you really don't have an accurate sound file. Um, but as you can see, that both of these are 
pretty comparable and very uh, close to what they read out on the same exact run. So um, this varies quite a bit from the um, airspeed module. The airspeed module seemed like it, you know, t it read quite a bit slower. But that is probably also because we were flying with the wind. And when you're flying with the wind, you're going to lose the uh, pressure. So you'll have a lower reading on the airspeed, and which is actually true because that's what it's measuring is airspeed. Okay, guys, that'll pretty much finish up this basic video on these three tools that measure the speed of your RC aircraft. Please look in the sidebar. I'll have links to each of the three where you can get more information on each of these tools. So thanks again for joining me, and uh, see you guys soon.